this week. Flames defenseman Derek Morris. The NHLPA presents Be a Player. Brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2002. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome to Be a Player, I'm Brett Lindros. This week I'm in Cowtown, Calgary, Alberta. Over the past few weeks I've been making the rounds of Western Canada and our final stop has been the site of some great hockey battles over the years. The Edmonton Oilers and Calgary Flames have long been fierce rivals and that intensity is heated up again as the teams are vying for playoff position in the Western Conference. Our guest this week has a unique perspective on the Battle of Alberta. Derek Morris grew up in Edmonton but in five NHL seasons has emerged as one of the Flames' top defensemen. Later in this show, we'll have Atlanta Thrashers high-scoring rookie Danny Heatley on Next Generation. But first, here's part one of my visit with the Flames, Derek Morris. Here's Derek Morris, chance to walk in, does, fires a shot, scores! Takes a shot, Morris scores! Keeps it in, there's a line, shot, score! Derek, you're a good Alberta boy, grew up in Edmonton. In this province, uh, I guess either you're a Flames fan or an Oilers fan. Which was it growing up? I was an Oilers fan, actually. Uh, my dad was a big Oilers fan when I was growing up. They were the dynasty. They were the team to watch. And I was a big Paul Coffey fan, so he made it exciting. And then I think uh, once I came to Calgary, I realized how uh, intense the rivalry really was. It didn't take me long to jump ship, though. Look out! You mentioned you were a coffee fan. Was there some other defensemen uh, that you watched maybe throughout your childhood that you tried to emulate? Well, yeah, I was. I, I, once I was done with Edmonton, I moved in on to Chicago as my favorite team, and then uh, I watched uh, Chris Chelios for his first few years. I really studied him. Actually, I had a hockey card I used to wear in midget on my shoulder pad. The old story, but uh, it was true. I had him on my shoulder pads. After uh, one year in Regina, drafted by uh, Calgary, what did you think when uh, you heard that uh, the Flames had called your name? <laughs> I was surprised because I was rated uh, 86th, actually, I think, and uh, I just went to the draft thinking I want to go there and see the experience. I was almost ready to go get a hot dog. I sent my brother to go up and get a hot dog. He missed the whole thing when I walked up there and everything. He came back and he wasn't in the seat, but uh, yeah, it, was, it was special. You're one of the four Flames in the early 20s back on D. Has it been a challenge having so many young guys back there? A lot of patience. Our coach has got a lot of patience with us. Uh, there's been a few nights where we've been god-awful, but uh, they find a way to make us better the next night. And I think having such a bunch of young guys that everybody's close, everybody kind of feels for each other, and everybody's trying to be the guy out there that's going to make a difference. And I think uh, at the young age, everybody's full of pee and vinegar, like they say, that's the old cliche, but uh, right now we got a couple of good seasoned veterans back there that are teaching us what we got to do, how we got to bring intensity every night and uh, find a way to win. Uh, Bob Bugner, we brought him in this year, he's been great. He's been uh, probably the heart and soul of our team. Why do you wear number 53? I don't know, I got, like I said, I got it at training camp and then it was superstitious for me. For 10 games there, I was thinking, there's no way I'm changing nothing. I'm using the same stick, same gloves, and then uh, I kept it the whole year and now it feels weird to, for me to change it up. But I'd like to get nine, but I don't think I'll get it down from the rafters. <laughs> that's what I wore in junior was nine, and uh, that's a big joke, I was bug landing us. So yeah. One day I'd like to get that jersey down, but uh, I don't think that there's <laughs> nobody better to be hung in the rafters than that guy. This summer you were invited to Team Canada's Olympic camp. What was that experience like? Yeah, I was pretty awestruck. I was surprised after re meeting a few of the guys and seeing that they were just like you and I, regular guys. Uh, it's funny how people look up to us as, as players and always want autographs and stuff, and we think it's an honor for us to sign it. Well, I think the same way when I go and see those guys, I th I'd like to get their autographs, but uh, I'm as nervous as anybody else to ask them. And they're just like anybody else. They have no problems doing it. And, and uh, that just shows the class and why they're leaders on their team, like I said earlier. The team got off to a great start. I think you guys only lost three of your first 21 games. What was going right for the team at that point? I think it was just uh, we were expected to finish at the bottom in the basement, and uh, we wanted to prove some people wrong. We went out there thinking, what the heck, what's the worst thing that can happen? We lose the game, everybody expects us to lose it anyway, so we might as well go out there. Lose it trying, so we went out and things were working good. Everybody was playing well. We were getting unbelievable goaltending from large there, and Jerome was scoring. Everybody was clicking, and uh, winning's contagious. It just went to the point where we just felt like we couldn't lose, and uh, now we're in a little bit of a skid right now, where it feels like 
can't get a win no matter what you do. So uh, it's, that's funny the way about hockey. It's an up and down game. How do the Flames get back on track and make it to the playoffs? We got to get back to playing the way we were playing. Uh, like you said, we had a good start there to the season, and we know what we got to do. But uh, right now, we're not getting rewarded. We, I feel we played pretty hard for a couple of games, but we're making little mistakes and shooting ourselves in the foot. And uh, we got to get back to the beginning of the season, trying to beat teams one nothing or two one. That's the way you got to win hockey games in the NHL. How has it felt not having the opportunity yet to play in the playoffs? It's frustrating, that's for sure. I've never missed one besides my pro hockey career. I've always played in the playoffs in midget Bantams, junior, and uh, those are the times that you live for. That Those are the games like when we play Edmonton. It's like that every night. You gotta go out and you gotta finish every check and you gotta make every little play. One mistake can cost you a game. That's the old, what they always say, or the power play's gotta be good. That's the way hockey should be, you go out there. And, it's fun that way. It makes the game fun. You want to be competitive and uh, it's frustrating when you're not in there because I know that the city of Calgary and the fans of Calgary see the times how good the team can be and then see times where we're crappy and, and they understand the game so well that we know we got to get out there and uh, we got to make her this year. It's now time for Be A Player Trivia. To play, send your answer to NHLPA.com slash Be A Player. All correct answers will be entered in a random draw with a chance to win an NHL 2002 game courtesy of EA Sports. All other correct responses will be entered for a chance to win an autographed NHLPA jersey. For complete contest rules, visit NHLPA.com and click on Be a Player. Which goalie had the most shutouts in the 90s? NHLer turned chiropractor, Pat Graham, next. To get people better that have seeing so many other people is a, it's, it's a pretty special feeling. In the heart of downtown Calgary lies Stephen Avenue. Turn of the century buildings line this street that is home to theaters, shops and hotels. I'm going to take a look around while you check out another former NHLer on After the Game. Pat Graham played just over 100 NHL games with Pittsburgh and Toronto. While his career may have been brief, Hockey was a catalyst for his current profession as a chiropractor. In junior hockey, I had had a, uh, a situation where I had a lot of a lot of back problems, and I tried the the traditional medical allopathic route, and nothing seemed to help out. And they had me in uh, wearing a big corset, and the only thing that did was uh, get the guys in the dressing room all excited. So. I, my dad finally suggested that I go see a chiropractor. He suggested uh, he do some treatment. Within four or five treatments, my back pain was gone. And at that point, I thought this is a pretty neat profession. So I always had that in the back of my mind. And then when the career didn't pan out the way I sort of hoped it would, and it ended a little shorter, I was able to go uh, back to school. Scotty, I know some tension in your mid back there. So I'm going to get you to turn over onto your stomach. I came downtown and met with the Dr. Peter Mackay, and uh, he and I practiced together for two years. And uh, I bought the practice off him. And at that time, it was a sort of a one-man deal. And it, since that time, I've brought in a couple chiropractors, and we've got massage therapists, shiatsu therapists, acupuncturists, and physiotherapists. So we've tried to make it a full, full health practice now. Make it out there, no problem. Okay. Being in the, the downtown Toronto core, most of our people are uh, white collar workers that spend all their day at the desk, at the computer, on the phones. So they get a lot of uh, upper back uh, and neck problems from working at the computer, repetitive strain injuries. That's mostly what we see in the downtown core here. I've developed a bit of a niche. I, I do a lot of work with the Toronto Blue Jays. I'm the Toronto Blue Jay team chiropractor. I've been with them since their glory days in 92, and that's been a ton of fun. Chiropractic is certainly a lot more physical than I ever thought it would be going into it. I come home at the end of the day, and uh, sometimes if you've seen quite a few patients, you get pretty beat up because you're lifting people around and a lot of physical movement and pushing and pressing and pulling. So it can be a grind and, and there's times when you may not feel 100% but you have to grind through it. Over the years the professions worked very hard to try and make it a more scientific uh, background and trying to, make, to prove that what we do for certain areas works very well. And, and for instance we know for low back pain that, that for mechanical low back pain there's nothing better than chiropractic manipulation and that's scientific background. I think the thing I like the best is uh, I'd have to say I'm a people person, I enjoy working with people. Uh, and the other thing is, quite often, you're the last resort because you're not mainstream medicine, so to speak. You're often the last resort and people will come in to you and the, the ability to get people better that have seen so many other people 
is a, it's, it's a pretty special feeling. Be a Player gives you a chance to ask your favorite NHL player a question. For your chance to participate, visit NHLPA.com. Patrick Nolan of Calgary, Alberta asked Jerome McGinley, how did you know that playing hockey was what you wanted to do, and who encouraged you the most in that decision? Uh, Patrick, it, hockey was something that uh, I just started at age seven and, and uh, loved it from when I started. It was uh, I loved watching uh, games on TV and uh, just really from the first step, my first year playing, I uh, wanted to be a professional hockey player. And, and my grandpa probably uh, had the most influence on me in, in my career. He took me to, to uh, my practices, made sure my skates were sharp, had sticks to, to go, and uh, so he's definitely had the most influence on my hockey career. Go for a ride with Derek Morris. Next. Oh, I did terrible. We'll be better. Mo, that's just I practice. Did they just warm up. They want yeah. to get rough. We'll wait for the finals. Time now for the Universal Music Hit Parade featuring Big Sugar with Turn the Lights On. Bertuzzi's the puck carrier. Nav is going to be the shooter in the front of the net. Bertuzzi scores. And now there's puck left for Jeff Dow. Dow fires it. Know Your Hockey, brought to you by Ford. Here's Craig Simpson. Sometimes the player who gets there first doesn't always win the race. Many times a player without the puck trailing the play is the most dangerous. Now the key to success is knowing when to jump up and when to stay. Here Rangers defenseman Brian Leach reads that the Devils get two forwards caught with the third forward watching the play. So Leach jumps into the hole to create an offensive opportunity. With one pass, Leach's speed through the neutral zone backs the defenseman up and he's so far away that Scott Stevens can't come and close the gap. A great individual effort creates a good scoring chance. Now transition is a big part of offense. On a turnover here, the Penguins get caught with three men. Now Mark Recchi is going to be the trailer. Now instead of jumping up in the play, watch the route that Recchi takes. A delay into the zone with Primo going to the net creates a passing lane for Recchi. Recchi gets the puck and makes no mistake. Now so many times you have to read of when the defenseman goes up if you're a forward. Matthias Nordstrom is the defenseman going to the net. Now Adam Deadmarsh, instead of driving to the net, delays and focuses on what's going to happen. You can see Nordstrom going in, takes Larry Onoff with him, and instead of going into traffic, Deadmarsh delays, Larry Onoff gets caught, and all of a sudden Adam Deadmarsh has a wide open net. Now by following the play and being smart and reading what's happening in front of you, you can create a great opportunity and give fits to the defense. Know Your Hawk, brought to you by Ford. The Calgary Flames are a young, fast, exciting team. Today we're going to find out just how fast as Derek Morris and a couple of teammates hit the track and race for the checkered flag on part two of our Be A Player Profile. It's a great, great day for motor car racing. Today we have the first annual Calgary Flames Can-Am Challenge with Derek Morris and Brett Linderos of Canada facing off against the American duo of Craig Conroy and Chris Clark. When you see this flag, you start racing. Just like a traffic light, green means go. Red means stop. You see the white flag, one lap to go. No passing under yellow, that's cheating. You'll be penalized. Maybe the Canada turn. way. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm all over that. If you get a wave black flag, you have to come into the pits for a five second stop and go penalty. I think Mo's gonna forget all this stuff. <laughs> the checkered flag. It does mean the race is over. You must pass this line. What do you say, boys? Let's go. Okay. Yeah, get it up. So, so when I'm ahead of you, you can't, you can't cut me off. Okay, that's the deal. I'm gonna I, want, I want to clarify that in the meeting room, just so you know, we're all square. I'm not going to let some American beat me today. USA. USA. <laughs> Don't look back. I'll take care of Craig. Good job, buddy. To start, the racers will complete 15 qualifying laps to determine the starting grid for the finals. 
The flag is dropped, and here they go. I got him on one quarter, that's it. Did you? Down here I got him, him. yeah. Oh, I did terrible. We'll be better. No, that's just I practice, terrible. they just warm up. They want yeah. to get rough, we'll wait for the finals. Conroy had the fastest lap in qualifying with a time of 31.71 seconds, followed by Morris, Linderos and Clark. USA deadline. As you can see, it's the American driver Conroy on the pole. The Canadians Morris and Linderos are sandwiched in between Conroy and Clark of the United States. Danny Heatley. I just want to keep learning and, and keep playing how I have been and uh, uh, hopefully things will, will keep going good. Be a Player, sponsored by EA Sports NHL 2002. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome back. Last summer, Canada's greatest hockey players gathered here at Father David Bauer Arena to prepare for the Olympic Games. One of Canada's future stars is Calgary native Danny Heatley. Selected second overall in the 2000 draft, Danny has already won two bronze medals for Canada at the World Junior Championships, and as a rookie with the Atlanta Thrashers, is part of a dynamic duo with Atlanta's other hot rookie, Ilya Kovalchuk. Here's Danny Heatley on Next Generation. Good turn over Heatley, steals it away. Hockey League goal. What a move! Score! Those are the kind of moves that'll put you in the league in a hurry, and Dan Heatley player. 
best league in the world, and uh, I was expecting the guys to be a lot stronger and, and, uh, and the pace to be faster, and, and it has been. You know, some of the surprises, I think, just going into new cities and the different styles of teams that you got to change your game and change your game plan every time you go into a new city. I think it's, it's a great place to learn, and, uh, both on the ice and off. I, mean, I think I, I, I learned a lot off the ice, just, just meeting new people, and and uh, matured a lot in those two years at school. It's just a great place. I mean, uh, on the ice, the hockey program is, uh, is unbelievable, and we get every uh, every chance to, to succeed. And uh, you know, they, they have a great weight room and great staff, and uh, they just want you to, to do well. And uh, you know, it's, it's been good for me. Heatley the other way. Danny I just want to keep getting better every day. And, uh, I think uh, if you talk to the older guys, I mean, they've, they've been in the league and they're still they're still learning things, new things every day. So I don't think you can ever be perfect in this game, and there's always things you need to learn. And, uh, you know, in this second half, I, won't, I just want to keep learning and, and keep playing how I have been, and, uh, and hopefully things will, will keep going good. Shoots the middle for the round, the heat lead, cross the line, shoot, score! Hopefully, uh, I can say he's a he's a goal scorer and, uh, and puts up points and. You know, that's that's what I've that's what I've done my whole career, and that's what I want to try to do in the NHL. And, you know, just take care of my own end uh, at the same time, and uh, and just keep learning every day, and, and try and learn new things every time you're on the ice. Be a player trivia is brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2002. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Which goalie had the most shutouts in the 90s? In the decade of the 90s, this guy had the most shutouts. He had 49, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Patrick? Wasn't Patrick. It's got to be someone. Broder. It's got to be someone from Blanc. the defensive team. Keep going. <laughs> You'll get it sooner later. Hasek. No? Hasek? I say uh, Eddie. Isn't it? Yeah. The Eagle, man. Know, He's sitting right over there. <laughs> Even if you don't think it's him, you got to see him. Hasek? Was not the dominator. Belfort. Eddie Belfort with 49. Wow. Nice, you got one, buddy. Yeah. See? Yachmanev. Can't center up, ricochet, pass it, front, Robitaille, out the skate, the post, and it's cleared, it's over. Shutout number five on the season for Ed Belfort. Well, it's just about time to ride into the sunset on this episode of Be a Player, but I'd like to thank Derek Morris for making a great show. I know Derek and the rest of Flames have their sights set on the playoffs, and I wish them well. Make sure you catch next week's show, as we'll profile more of your favorite players right here on Be A Player. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you then. Brett Lindros is clothing supplied by The Coop, clothing for men, Toronto. NHLPA.com is your source for the latest stats, scores, and NHL player information. Click on Be A Player for the latest show information, or to send us your questions and comments. You'll find it all at NHLPA.com. I just want to thank my sponsors, Castro, <laughs> Esso, my friends here at Grand Indoor Racing. <laughs> Putting the car together, it was really running smooth today. Yeah. Brakes are good, it's all dialed in.